American professional cyclist for Visma Lisa Bike, Sepp Kuss, is definitively one of the greatest cyclists on earth right now. Not only did he win a dramatic Vuelta a España in 2023, he's also won stages of the Tour de France, the Criterium de Dauphiné, the Vuelta a España, and he has helped Primoz Roglic to multiple Grand Tour wins and Jonas Vingegaard to his two Tour de France wins over the last two years. Sepp is without a doubt one of the most hardworking and selfless mountain domestiques and GC riders in the pro peloton today, and in today's video I'm speaking with Sepp about how he dresses for winter training rides. This video was born of a comment that I made in a previous video where I asked you guys if you'd like to see my system for dressing in winter. To my surprise, a number of people replied and said they wanted to see how I dressed for winter training rides. And so in response to that, I thought I would step it up a notch and interview one of the world's greatest cyclists about how he dresses for winter training rides and also give you guys this insight as to how I dress and the system that I use for going out on the bike when the weather is chilly. Before we get into today's video, I wanna say a massive thank you to to Sepp for his time in helping make this video possible. Sepp is an incredibly kind and selfless human being and it's a real treat to have him on the channel. So without further ado, let's get into this video. This is the system that I use and Sepp Kuss uses for dressing for winter training rides. Enjoy. Alrighty, so let's get into this video today. Now, as I said, this video was born of a comment that I made in a previous video about not overdressing in winter. For this video, I'm gonna break down the different categories of dressing to four different temperature ranges. I'm gonna do 15 to 20 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees, five to 10 degrees, and zero to five degrees. Anything below zero, I generally just wear the one kit, but I do change my kit for those other temperature ranges. So let's start out with the first thing that I do when I wake up in the morning of a ride. The first thing I'm doing is looking at the temperature. Now I'm not just looking at the temperature for what it is right now when I look, I'm looking at the minimum and the maximum temperature to know the extremes of what I'm going to be riding in. The second thing I do after I check the temperature is I check my training for the day. Now this is really important because it's going to dictate how hot or how cold I might get on a ride. If I'm doing intervals, I'll generally dress for one to two degrees colder than the weather is suggesting throughout the ride. And I know that when I roll out the door, I'm going to be colder initially, but that I am then going to heat up during my intervals. And if I'm dressing for a day where I either have an easy steady day or a recovery ride, I'll wear a little bit more. And then the third thing I look for is obviously any rain. Now, if it's going to be dry, I generally am fine. If it's gonna be wet, I'll dress a little bit differently. The same also goes for humidity. If I'm riding in winter and it's more humid, I'll dress slightly different to if it's less humid or it's dry because the feeling of temperature is going to be different. So those are my three first initial tips that I do every day when I get out on the bike. Check the temperature, check my training and check for rain. Alrighty, so I'm standing here with Sepp Kuss. Uh, he's very kindly allowed me into his house <laughs> to have a chat with him. To straight into his... the wardrobe. Yeah, straight into the wardrobe to have a look at what he's got in his winter kit wardrobe. Uh, we're currently up in Andorra where Sepp lives and does a majority of his training. So it's quite cold up here in the mountains. Last week it was getting down to sort of minus seven, minus eight degrees in the mornings. I wanted to ask you about sort of two different temperature ranges. Let's start out with the first temperature range being the slightly more warmer end of winter. Say when you're rolling out in the morning, say it's five degrees, but it might be warming up a little bit more. Do you usually think about what you're going to do, to do in terms of efforts for the day or do you dress based on purely on temperature or how long you're riding for or what's your system for dressing in winter? I think first off I, I just look at the at the temperature kind of the the range of temperature for the day or, or if there's any rain or other <laughs> yeah. uh, moisture throughout the day and uh, kind of plan for that but for sure if I have efforts or if I'm going to be doing a lot of climbing and then descending then I want something yeah, where I'm not going to be sweating too much but also something to put over over the top of everything it's the same for when I'm when I'm leaving home just have something like a, a, a good rain jacket something that's packable to start out with so that's always kind of the the base of things so you think about the outside first rather than the inside yeah, yeah. So I always, yeah, I think more about the outside. Like my that that rain jacket is like my my safety layer. I think okay, today it's going to be pretty hot, but if I run into anything, I always have this to put on for the cold descent, or if I get too sweaty, or if the weather, you know, because here in the, in the mountains, it always it's always changing. So I kind of start with that, and then and then go from there. Yeah, cool. And then so say it was five degrees in the morning, but it might warm up to twelve degrees or fifteen mm -hmm. degrees. What would you put on as like a as a first layer, and then 
then as a second layer between that sort of five and 15 degree range, what are you aiming yeah. for there? Yeah, normally I put on I like a long sleeve base layer okay. with like kind of some merino wool so or something a bit synthetic. Or if it's if it's gonna be really sunny and, and quite hot, then I just go for the more short sleeve base layer and then always like a, a thicker thermal on top. So this is actually a kind of in-between one, but uh, yeah, this, this fits well over the, over a long sleeve base layer or over a short sleeve, it's, it's, um, it's pretty good. So I always try and size my winter clothing a bit larger so I can always fit that stuff underneath. So I'm not feeling super, super yeah. tight in the chest and the arms or the armpits. And then from there, I always think if I want a vest or not, because yeah. sometimes a vest, you know, you, you really heat up if, if that's zipped all the way and you're going uphill. And then if it's unzipped, then it's kind of always flapping around. But the other consideration with the vest is you have a whole nother three pockets. pockets so that. you have a whole nother layer of, of storage for your, your food, your extra gloves, Loves your yeah whatever else you're carrying because I'm definitely more of a, a pockets guy than a than a bar bag guy so I try and consolidate everything a little bit on my bike but mostly just on my on my body so you're going just to back up a moment so you said you wear a long sleeve base layer even when it's kind of warm outside you still go for a long sleeve base or a short, short sleeve but you're never just going oh, I'll just wear like a summer weight base layer and put a thicker outer layer on yeah usually I I, I go for the the thicker base layer um, okay. and and if it gets really hot then I just completely unzip but I, I always like to have my arms a bit a bit warm I mean I, I guess in, in in how I prioritize what what parts of my body I want warm I definitely want my my hands my toes and and just kind of my face you know if I have a good thick buff or something that that helps kind of control the rest of the, the core temperature Okay, so once I've woken up in the morning, I've checked the temperature, I've checked my training, and I've checked for any rain. The first thing I'm gonna do if the temperature is above 15 degrees is I'm gonna wear a summer weight base layer. Now, a summer weight base layer is a nice, lightweight, breathable base layer that you can wear for just a little bit of warmth, but you'll find that if you do warm up, you're not gonna be sweating too much. I'm wearing a regular pair of bib shorts with this without leg warmers or knee warmers. And then on top, I'm doing one of two things. If I have a hard training day with intervals, I will wear a short sleeve summer jersey with with a pair of arm warmers and then a wind stopper gilet which is just like a vest without any pockets just to stop the wind if it does get cold or if I'm just doing a steady ride with no specific intervals I'll wear a thin long sleeve jersey now the reason I wear a thin long sleeve jersey on top if my temperature is going to be stable is because it's just easy to wear the one garment however if I am doing those intervals and I'm going to heat up lots I'm taking off the layers while I'm doing the intervals then I can put them back on afterwards if you just wear the one layer while you do intervals at the temperature range you'll find that you get really really sweaty and then you're gonna get a bit cold on the way home. So for me, I wear a few layers when I'm doing intervals and then I just wear one layer if I'm not really doing any intervals. Alrighty, so we uh, were just talking before about the slightly warmer temperatures. One thing yeah. I didn't ask you about was the legs. You just said to me off camera that you quite like tights as opposed to leg warmers. Why is that? And what temperature do you wear tights up to? Yeah, I, I like tights. I think part of it is just for the convenience. You know, you just you just pull it on and then you're, you're done. Otherwise, if you go the leg warmers or knee warmers, you put on the knee warmers getting the shorts over getting all the creases out and, and it, it's always you know it, it never feels quite quite right at least yeah. to me but the tights you know they're they're also a bit thicker throughout so if you have your normal let's say summer shorts they're thinner in the in the groin area and, and throughout the rest of the shorts so then even if you have thicker leg warmers then you feel that that difference um, yeah. So for me, the tights is just a nice one, one, one thickness piece, all the one way through. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then uh, let me ask you, at what temperature does it have to be before you start putting on like toe caps or like even shoe covers? Is that much colder? My feet get cold pretty easy. So I, if it's less than 10 degrees, I usually go for some some toe covers, especially here if it's, if it's fresh in the morning. I don't like the feel so much of full shoe covers. So even if it's below zero, I'm, I'm usually fine with just the thick toe covers and then um, just wear a bit thicker socks and then that keeps the ankles a bit warmer as well. But I, I definitely prefer the feeling of the, the toe cover just because it, it, it feels like my, my foot is, is better planted in the shoe than when I have a big, big boot on. Alrighty, so let's get into the next temperature bracket. Now that's the 10 to 15 degree range. If I'm going out on a day that's 10 to 15 degrees and I'm doing intervals, I will wear a pair of regular bib shorts with either leg warmers underneath 
knee warmers underneath, or I'm wearing a pair of three quarter tights. I'm wearing a summer weight base layer if I have intervals, and then I'm putting a long sleeve thermal jersey over the top and maybe a gilet as well. The reason for this is because when I'm doing those intervals, I can strip down the gilet, I can unzip the jersey, and I can find I can be the right temperature during the intervals without getting too sweaty. And then in between, I can zip them all up and layer up and still feel warm when the temperature is chilly. If I have a steady day of riding and no intervals and the weather is between 10 and 15 degrees, I will wear a long sleeve thermal base layer and I will then wear a thermal jersey over the top of that and then also maybe a gilet as well. A synthetic thermal base layer is a really good item to wear anytime that the temperature is below 15 degrees because you will find that not only does it keep you warm but it dries out really quickly and you'll find that it stretches with your body and it's just a nice basic warm undergarment to wear. You might also like to go for a merino wool base layer. They're really good. They dry out really quickly and they don't smell. However, no matter what you do, please do not do something like wear a cotton t-shirt underneath your jersey. You'll find that it just gets wet, it soaks through, and it will make you really cold if you stop at a cafe and you cool down or you go out and there's a lot of wind going through it. Stick with something that's designed for cycling or sports use and you'll find that you get the best temperature range and comfort out of that. For anyone wondering or if I haven't made it obvious enough, my kit sponsor is Attacker and I want to say a massive thank you for the years of support Attacker has given me. All the kit that I show you in this video is going to be from Attacker. If you would like to get a discount on Attacker kit, there's a link in the description down below. Cool, so let's jump into uh, the really cold temperatures then because I think this is the thing that most people on, on uh, YouTube are going to be interested in is like deep winter. As I've said, we're up in Andorra where like last week it was minus seven. You've obviously ridden in colder temperatures than that as well. Let's talk about uh, what you would put on like say from the bottom up when it's when you've looked at the temperature and it's like oh I'm rolling out it's minus seven uh, the warmest it's going to be is like zero mm -hmm. yep so always you know same with the more medium temperatures always a good base layer so just kind of like uh, something like this kind of base layer I don't know it even says the percentage of 35% wool 35% polyester 26% poly uh, middle and <laughs> <laughs> and then elastane so okay uh so, yeah something like that and and that's always a good good base keeps you warm it, it wicks the moisture pretty well and then so on on top of that if it's yeah if it's if it's really cold and i'm not going to be climbing too much or sweating too much then then i would go for for this one it has this uh this polar tech uh material on the inside so that that keeps you really really warm and it's it also is is pretty pretty warming when it's when it's wet but with these with these water warmer items you have to be really careful with how much you're you're sweating because if you stay zipped up on the climb and you just sweat a ton then you're gonna get pretty cold either way yeah, you're gonna freeze on the descent yeah yeah i mean for a man who has access to every kind of possible cycling kit you could need like what's your like oh i love this piece this garment is my go-to is it that is it i mean that's the hard thing about being in the mountains is that you're you're going up and down so much. So then sometimes this item I would wear more if it's more of a flat ride and I'm going to be steady body temperature the whole time. But if it's more up and down, then I go for more more layers options. So base layer, thicker thermal, a vest over that, a couple different kinds of gloves, and and yeah, always a, a good um, like wind wind stopping layer over the top. So you might be wearing up to five layers. Yeah, if it's really yeah, yeah or even six, and then just just accept that you're going to be pretty uh, <laughs> full pretty. up with with all the extra things. But I th I think it's worth it to to stay warm. I mean, out of interest, so for you, kind of always at the limit in terms of performance, uh, and and your body's probably on its limit of potentially getting sick. I guess mm -hmm. when you get really cold, are you? Is that something that's in the back of your mind? Like oh, I can't get sick because I've got you know the start of the season coming, or I've got training camp coming up. Are you thinking about that when you're dressing, or are you just like pure comfort? No, I just want be comfortable uh not too much i think after years and 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 different races especially where you 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 have the feeling of oh yeah i was really underdressed there because in a race you you never have the opportunity to be comfortably dressed because you're exerting yourself more you're you're always in a in a hurry yeah, <laughs> in, yeah. in a race so i think for me, if I know if I'm if I'm dressed comfortably, then I'm gonna be let's say uh, healthy on the bike and not and not getting sick. I always prefer to overdress a bit than than underdress. But it's it, it I think it comes with experience and just trying to always stay more or less less dry yeah. when you have the downhills where you can get really cold. Yeah, interesting.
Alrighty, now moving on to the next temperature bracket, and that is the five to 10 degree range. Now within this temperature range, that five degrees can actually make a massive amount of difference. One, because if you go up some difficult climbs or you've got a day of training, it's very easy to overheat when the temperature is closer to that 10 degree mark. But equally, if it is staying around that five to six degree temperature mark, it's very easy to get cold if you're not doing any kind of intensity. So this is what I wear for the five to 10 degree range. Firstly, on my legs, I'll put a pair of three quarter length tights or full length tights, one or the other. If it is sunny outside, but it's that chilly temperature, I'm gonna go with the three quarter length tights. If there's any kind of moisture around on the road, either if it's rained the day before, or it looks like it is going to rain, I'll wear a pair of full length tights there. I will also then wear a thermal base layer, the long sleeve thermal base layer from Attacker. Over the top of that, I will put a long sleeve thermal jersey. So I'm not going for the thinner one. When it's this temperature, I go for the thicker Attacker thermal jersey. And then on top of that, I will put my gilet. One of the accessories that I then pair with this that I find helps keep me really warm is a buff around my neck. Now the buff is actually my favorite accessory out of all the cycling accessories. Not only is it nice and cozy to wear when it's cold outside, but because of the amount of blood flow that's close to your skin around your neck, you'll find that if you put a buff on when the temperature is cold, it can help keep your entire body warm because your neck is not cooling down. And equally, if you do need to relieve yourself of some temperature, by taking the buff off, you immediately get a temperature drop, which feels really, really nice. So I wear a buff every time the temperature is below 10 degrees, no matter whether the sun's out or not, you can take it off and pack it away in a pocket really, really easily. I highly recommend a buff and attacker has a few different colors as you can see here. Once it starts getting down to that five to 10 degree range, I also change my socks up. So generally above 10 degrees, I just wear standard attacker cotton socks. But once it gets down below 10 degrees, I wear the attacker winter socks. Now the attacker winter socks have a thicker base to them. They're a bit thicker overall. They're a bit more cushy and comfortable and they have some extra thickness to mean that they are actually a little bit warmer when the temperature is that bit colder. Like Sep, I don't really like running anything on my feet unless it's really cold or really necessary. So when the temperature is above five degrees, unless it's raining, I'm not putting anything on my feet like toe caps or anything like that. The final thing I'll add when the temperature is below 10 degrees is I'll take a pair of mid winter gloves from Attacker. These mid winter gloves are a very nice feeling, semi thick glove, but they're not too thick and bulky that you can't access all the controls on your handlebars. And also the fingertips on these gloves mean that you can access your phone if you need to and swipe around the screen, which I find a massive help as you guys know, I like to take photos and videos with my phone while I'm out on the ride. So this makes a big difference there. I'll keep those in my pocket. I'll put them on for the descent or generally just riding around if I'm doing an easy day. Cool, so now let's just jump into, like again, with those deep winter temperatures, can I ask you about your accessories in terms of mm -hmm. glove, buff, cap, like thick beanie? Do you have like preferences do you go like, oh, my hands, I don't mind my hands getting a little bit colder so I don't run mm -hmm. as thicker gloves or are you just like thick everywhere if it's really, really cold? First of all, I, like I said earlier, I really like the, you know, having, having warm hands, but I also don't like having thick gloves. So yeah. it's, uh, so let's say for the, for the downhill, I'll, I'll put on something thick like these, these kind of lobster, lobster gloves. So if you're getting cold in these, then probably shouldn't, shouldn't be out. So I have these just kind of when you're just cruising downhill and, and you're not shifting very much, you just need finger to break and, and that's it because with the, with the thicker gloves, you, you feel a bit less part of your bike. So I always have this and then like a, a thinner, let's say springtime set of gloves in the pocket. So I'm always kind of switching back and oh. forth between the gloves. So, you know, I, I'll put these on for the, for the downhill. And then when I warm up a bit or I'm on a flat road or, or climbing, then I put on the, the pretty lightweight gloves or, or no gloves at all. So you carry two sets of gloves with you on a ride? Yeah, quite often. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This time of year, quite often I'll have the, just the thicker ones yeah, cool. as, uh, as a plan B. And then, uh, are you a buff person? Like you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I always go with the buff. In general, it's just your standard uh, thin buff. But if it's um, if it's super cold, then then I always like uh, you know something like this, a bit bit thicker buff where you know it kind of stays perched on your on your neck, and, and you don't always have to kind of grab up to to get it above your nose. And and the thin ones, once you're once you're breathing in them for a while, or all the snots coming down, then then they just get wet. So these thicker ones. They kind of have a bit more. Uh, this is almost like a ski level buff, hey? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and they do get really hot, so I think this is also something that you you want to take off pretty quickly if you're if you're going uphill or you know doing efforts or something. So you are throughout a ride, you're really taking off and putting on layers. Yeah, because you know, especially around Andorra, you're always stopping at the top of the climb anyways to to throw on a jacket or uh, have a bar or something. So I just take those moments to okay, let's let's see how long this next next downhill is going to be. How how cold it's going to be if it's in the shade or not and then 
yeah, just try to keep more or less even body temperature the mm. whole time. And finally, getting down to the last temperature range that I dress for. Now, this is anything below five degrees. I did say zero to five degrees, but we're gonna go with below zero up to five degrees. Now, when it's that kind of temperature, if I have intervals, it doesn't really matter what I wear because I generally find if it's below five degrees and I'm doing intervals, I'm not heating up so much that I'm sweating a lot, but it is important to still work on a layering system there. So for the temperature being below five degrees, I will always roll out wearing a pair of long winter tights. Now, these tights that I have on in this video are attackers all day winter tights. They are a neoprene style of tights, so they're quite thick, but they're very, very warm no matter whether it's rainy or whether it's dry. And I really like those when the temperature is really cold. It keeps your entire body and your entire leg warm. Also, as you can see at the ankles, they have this kind of slight neoprene finish on there, and that helps keep your ankles dry and keep your entire body warm. Under those, I'll also wear the winter socks. On the top, I will then put a long sleeve thermal base layer. I'll put on a long sleeve thermal jersey as well. And then if I'm absolutely certain the temperature is not going to go above five degrees, I'll then wear a jacket over the top of that. One of the big things that I would say that I focus on more when the temperature is colder is actually the accessories rather than the clothing. So when the temperature is below five degrees, I will also take with me a little skull cap that goes on top of my head that keeps my head warm. I will wear a buff, as I said in the last point, that's really important to me. The buff helps keep my neck warm. I'll wear a slightly thicker pair of winter gloves. So attacker have some deeper winter gloves or if it's really cold, I'll wear a pair of deep winter ski gloves. And I find those are the best in terms of keeping wind out when it is definitely below zero degrees. But I don't generally carry the ski gloves unless it's below that zero degrees because I find it's just too much to carry. And then for me, it's at this temperature that I'll put on a pair of booty covers. I find a pair of shoe covers like this helps keep my feet and my ankles warm. And that makes a big difference to my overall warmth as well. It's really important to remember that you lose a majority of your heat through your extremities, things like your head, your neck, your hands, and your feet. So if you can keep those those areas of your body warm, you'll find that in the coldest temperatures, you actually feel most warm and most comfortable. So then the, one of the last questions I've got for you is what temperatures it, does it need to be before you're putting on like full booty covers, like full, full length? For me, that would have to be cold and rain because that's, that's when I start to, to melt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so then I, then I go for the full, full option. Okay. So just real cold and rain, but if it's just yeah. real cold, but it's sunny, you're yeah. staying away from the booty covers. Yeah. Then I'm staying away from the booty covers just from just that I need my just my toes warm and the rest can can be a bit bit more cold it's kind of nice to have your ankles a bit free hey so yeah. you can like pedal a bit easier exactly and, yeah yeah right. I always just have a weird sensation with the the full the full shoe covers but yeah if it's raining then then you need everything pretty pretty sealed now, a couple of other little accessories I do want to mention as we get towards the end of this video. One of them is that I will wear a cycling cap if I'm riding in the rain. A cycling cap is great because it's got a little peak and although it doesn't keep your ears warm, I do find that having the peak on the front there, when it is raining and the rain is coming from the top down, obviously, you find that by having a peak there, it's not going straight into your face. The other thing that I really like wearing in winter is a pair of photochromic glasses. Photochromic glasses or lenses are a lens that changes in different lighting conditions. So you find that if you're riding either in low light in winter in the rain or when there's not as much sun around the lenses are quite clear but then equally when you are in some bright sunshine they go a bit dark so they work well in all kinds of lighting conditions it's really important not to just take glasses off in winter because there's things like mud spraying off the road it's always cold as well and that cold air against your eyes not only causes a potential little bit of damage also it makes it more difficult to see so having a good pair of photochromic glasses in winter makes a nice difference there and then a couple of other little tips that I don't use very often but I have picked up over my years of riding. That is that if you are prone to getting very cold hands, I would try wearing a pair of butyl gloves underneath your regular gloves. You'll find that that rubber helps keep your hands a little bit warmer under your regular gloves. And then on top of that, if you're prone to getting really cold feet, wrapping some aluminium foil around your toes before you put them in your shoes helps keep your toes a little bit warmer. One other thing you can do, which I don't do, but you can if you live somewhere very cold and there's a lot of cold air, is you can tape up the inside holes of your shoes to stop air going through the vents in your shoes. If you are prone to getting a cold head, you may also want to wear a more aero helmet in winter because you'll find that without all the vents there letting in cold air, your head stays just that little bit warmer. All right, and last question that I have for you. Can you think of a race that you've done? Like what's the worst conditions you've ever done? And like whether you dress perfectly or you dress terribly, like something that sticks in your mind is like one of the peak experiences of I'm at the limit of dressing capacity here. Yeah, yeah. I think... 
you know, this this year in the in the Giro in in the 2023 Giro, it was super super cold and rainy almost the whole first half of the race. So that that gave me a lot of experiences with what I should dress or when I've been underdressed or overdressed. And I think you realize that in a race situation because you don't have time to just put on what's the most comfortable because if it's starting uphill from in the first hour, then you can't be with two different rain jackets on. But um, yeah, I remember one stage, I forget which one exactly, but we, we climbed up this super long kind of draggy climb forever. And it's just getting colder and colder and colder and rain is coming down harder and harder. And then almost 20, 30 K downhill. And, and the whole time we're just going faster and faster because it's a really strong break ahead. And, and then you think, oh, there's time, there's time. There's still 10 K left in the climb. But then you realize the whole caravan is full with everybody changing clothes. You see guys stopped on the side of the road, like with frozen hands, the directors are putting clothes on them. And you're thinking, oh God, I should get the, I should get changed now. But then I ended up getting super cold too. So my hands were frozen. I couldn't zip up my, I think I was wearing three rain jackets uphill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, and then we have a guy on our team, Eduardo, and, and he never gets cold. And then we hear on the radio, oh, I need gloves. I need gloves. And I was back at the car. I was like, okay, I'll bring, I'll bring the gloves to him, but I don't know. I don't know if I'll get to him in time. And then I got to him just over the top of the climb, but we, our hands were both so cold that we couldn't, you know, cause you have these neoprene gloves that you just can't yeah. get on and then a whole downhill just frozen hands and your neck is totally frozen and stiff because you're just you know on the limit sprinting out of every corner but your muscles are totally cold and yeah just yeah. just those moments where you you have no option but to just go just Otherwise, to keep you're, you're, yeah right? yeah and you know it's, it's miserable but it's uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Interesting. Yeah. Now, one thing I haven't obviously spoken about so far in this video is if you are riding in cold temperatures and in the rain. Riding in the rain is an unavoidable fact of riding in winter. You've got a couple of solutions. One of them is that you can stay indoors, of course, but if you do want to get outside, there's a few accessories that I recommend to avoid getting too cold in the rain. The first one is on top of that regular layering system that I mentioned using a really great outer rain jacket. Now, there's obviously lots and lots of brands. There's different thicknesses of rain jackets. You can get a packable rain jacket for light showers or you can get a thick rain jacket to wear all day in winter. I actually don't use a rain jacket too often because of how dry it is here. But if you are looking into getting a rain jacket, do check out the IPX rating of them. That is how waterproof they are. It's worth chatting to your local shop about what works best for the kinds of rainy weather that you're going to be riding in. But getting a good outer layer to chuck on in the rain is very, very important. On top of this, a pair of nice neoprene gloves is good and neoprene shoe covers. Now the reason neoprene is great is because like a wetsuit, it allows some water in, but then it traps that water and it heats it up and that keeps your hands or your feet warm. I would also recommend using one of these little flaps underneath your saddle in winter. They're called an arse saver. If it is raining, they stop as much water flicking up your back as you might get. And that water flicking up your back can soak into the layers that you've got on it and end up making you that extra little bit cold. So if you use an arse saver or you use a mud guard in winter, that makes a big difference to your overall body temperature. It also just keeps you that little bit cleaner as well so you're not getting mud sprayed all over you awesome all right well thank you so much for taking the time to uh, chat with us no and worries, walk Chris. us through your <laughs> your wardrobe it's been cool to see i definitely have some uh, shopping to do to get enough kit to keep up with you uh good luck to your training gear <laughs> uh and yeah cheers Thanks, Tris. Thanks, man. Alrighty, now that brings us up to the end of this video. I hope you guys got something out of this, learned something from Sep, maybe learned something from me. If you enjoyed this video, please whack a like on it. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do. I've got more videos with pro cyclists coming in future and more tips and tricks that you might get something out of as well. Happy riding, and I'll see you guys all soon. Alrighty, and you.